So uh, this is a new video that I'm going to walk through how to use the ion modal component in ion framework and then also show you a pattern that I use to manage state with um, modals in ionic framework. So let's just get started with adding the ion modal component. We do the normal utilization of the is open property. For those of you who get this, you can kind of skip ahead. I'm going to put a little legend on the bottom to kind of show you when I'm getting to the good parts. But here we're just showing the basic um, approach of how you can manage state to render the modal um, by using React's useState function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of is open inside of a state variable. And I'm going to modify that based on a button click. And when the button is clicked, we will change is open to true, which will then trigger the ion modal to be opened. It's a pretty straightforward approach. Um, I found that I use a lot of modals in my applications and in using all these modals, I've tried a bunch of different approaches and this seems to be the best approach for managing the state. So I have my modal and then what I'm also gonna do is like inside, so the modal is just a wrapper of your presentation container. So what I'm doing now is um, I'm not breaking out a separate presentation container. I'm just inside the element, I'm putting child fields in for the uh, open and close. So you can see I got my button, I open a modal, I click the button, I change my state to false and the modal's closed. All right, so now let's move to um, a little bit more advanced usage of um, the modal. But first let's style this guy a little bit um, so that you get more of a look that you will see inside of an Ionic Framework app. Um, this is kind of a recurring pattern that you see in Ionic Framework apps. You have your Ion page, your Ion header, Ion toolbar, Ion title. Um, I'm also going to incorporate that into the modal so that we have um, a consistent look on, in my application between what my pages look and what my modal looks like. All right, so hmm, why isn't my title showing properly on my page? What did I miss? <laughs> What's going on? Toolbar, title. Content page. Oh, I didn't have my iron page in the right place. All right, let's get my iron page in the right place. We render it right here. You go. Now we have our title. All right, so we have our basic page. We click our modal. We see our open is mo our modal is opened and closed. So let's copy the header stuff that you want and let's put it inside of my modal. So when I render my modal, it looks like a nice eye on uh, modal with the see. I got my title at the top and the bottom. So that's starting to look a little bit better. Um, okay, let's um, take it to the next place. So let's add a field to our Ionic form. Because what we want to get to in the end here is we want to show how you can manage the form fields inside your Ionic modal and pass um, values in and out. So how I stumbled across this was I wanted to be able to use the same form for creating a new object and editing existing objects. So we need to be able to pass in default values. So here, let's just um, use the, the ion item pattern. We have the ion item that wraps a label, which then wraps an ion input. And we're gonna keep this simple. We just have to have our basic text field. As you can see right now, we're just opening and closing it. Nothing great happening. Um, open, close, open, close. Okay. Um, let's clean it up, put the normal class name ion padding on here. Gonna get it, make it look a little better. All right, no, yeah, it looks a little bit better, a little bit better. Okay, so now we are passing our state in it, uh, not passing state in that, we're just showing how you have a field inside your eye. All right, now the next step is let's create a separate component um, for the modal. So we don't wanna keep all this stuff inside of our uh, main component. So um, we're going to create a new React functional component that we're going to use to render the modal. And, um, we're just going to copy the bulk of the code over and then what we're going to need to do is create the properties that get passed into uh, this modal component. Once again, the idea here is that we want to create these separate components and you take these components, you structure them together to build your app. Since we're using TypeScript here, I'm going to cheat a little bit despite what I said in my last video and I'm just going to use any to just get this thing rolling. Um, so I don't have to create all the types, but we'll circle back around in the end and create the appropriate types for calling. Uh, the modal. So I got my modal. Uh, my modal needs a property called is open. So we create the is open and we pass that in. So that's set. And then uh, let's see what else it's missing. Oh, we have to on the uh, on the close the modal. So we're going to take this function out of here. 
And we're going to pass that function as a property called onClose to my model. Just take that same code, paste it right in there, and click. And uh, now let's create our property called onClick. We're passing it in. And then we'll just call the function inside the button, and we should be back where we were before. Everything's functioning fine, but you see we have a nice, we have a completely separate component to manage my modal instead of all that code being bogged down inside the uh, primary component. So that's a, a, a nice refactoring um, that's beneficial, and then hopefully you can use it again. So now let's talk about passing data in. So I'm going to create a new property called initial data. So if I want to be able to edit um, an object, I can pass it in as the initial data that will be used when um, your modal is first rendered. Um, and we will pass this thing in as initial data variable. So we get that set up. So now we have our initial data is open and closed. And our ion input, it has a default value and our default value will be the initial value that's passed in. So that's what we're setting up. Oh, now let's do this another way because what's gonna happen is to manage the change on the variable, um, you're going to want to use state. So what? let's just um, set up our use state at the top. And we will use that. So with um, the ionic components, you listen to the ion on change element. I mean, ion on change event. And when you get the change event, you will set your local state variable to the value that gets returned um, from ion change. So that's what we're doing here. My set data name. and um, be careful, you need to make sure it's e detail.value, which is where you get the string from. Um, and then we gotta manage some typing around here to get the little squiggly line to go away. So we're gonna set our um, value for the state to be a string a null or undefined. And I'm pulling that based on what um, I know e detail value is set as. All right? So now as I make changes, we should get the value. And then what we do is we set the value to whatever is in data name. And that's how we get that to work. But what we want to do is we also want to set the default value for when the component first launches. And so what we do is we set the initial value of our state variable to the initial data that got passed in. And so now um, we are able to open the modal with an initial set of values. And so like I said, the objective here is we want to be able to use the same modal to manage creating an object and editing an object. So this is a pattern for how you can pass the data in and out um, and use the same modal uh, component for both editing and creating the object. And so what we're going to do here is um, on a successful close, we're going to pass the updated value back, um, back as a property on the close. And then we're also going to pass another variable called cancel. So if you don't cancel, cancel will be false. If you do cancel, cancel will be true. And um, the data will get passed back in an object called data with a string called name. So theoretically, if you had like name, address, or whatever, your data object would contain all those values. And so now here we'll add our cancel. We'll put the color of danger, give it a nice red so people can know danger, danger. And on close, we'll set canceled to true and we'll set data to null so that no data is coming back on cancel. Um, so this is once again um, a nice way to be able to look at the results from the modal closing and know what the appropriate action is you take. What we'll do is we'll get the response back in the on close and we will use that response to determine what's the appropriate action that we want to take. Um, so let's create another function up top here that will manage that. We'll call it on modal close. And it'll give us the opportunity to look at the data that's getting passed back to us, right? So of course we want to set the modal is open to false either way. So the modal gets closed. Um, but in, in, in most scenarios, you're gonna actually want to do something with that data. And so, you know, instead of once again, shoving all that inside the, um, the render method, we're gonna create a separate function that will um, work with the data that gets passed back and take the appropriate action. Um, we have a, we're going to create another state variable called uh, modal response. Um, we're going to take the response that we get back and we'll set that with it. And the reason we want to do that is I want to use it to show you the results in the window. So when we come back, we are going to set modal response to the um, information that comes back from the response.
And then we're going to take that response and we're going to render it on the page so that you can see it in action. This is a lot easier um, instead of what I usually do is just sometimes show you the data inside the Chrome debugger, but rendering it on the page, I think it's a lot clearer. And what we'll do is if I don't get any model response, I just won't show it. All right, so you see we're getting the result back. Where I save, I get the data. If I cancel, I get cancel. When I make a change, my change data comes through. So, but then also the initial value is getting passed back in. And so we need to clean. Yeah, um, well, what's going on? Um, initial data set, initial data set, initial data. Yeah, we need, that's, this is a bug. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. The initial data is always set to error, and so it should not, you should not be seeing the, um, Aaron has changes when you reopen the window. I suspect what's happening is that it is caching that value. Okay, so um, I found what I believe is my problem. It's a, it's a state thing, right? Um, so I'm going to create another state variable that I will set at the start, which will update the properties that are getting passed into the component. Um, before I just had a hard coded value, um, and I don't, and I think that what was happening was that the object wasn't um, getting the appropriate data passed in. So what we're going to do is when I click the button, I'm going to I'm going to actually set the property on the modal um, so that it gets the right data every time. So I'll use my new state variable called my user, and I'll put the name property on it, and that's how I'll pass the initial value in through that um, state property. Um, so, well, uh, it's, I don't pass in my name. I just pass in my user. So let's change it. All right. So let's just get this straight. Now we have our name going in properly. We're getting our name back. Aaron Saunders name going in properly, getting our name back. Okay. Um, well, let's do a little bit more cleanup here. So first of all, let's make sure that um, when you're closing out of your modal that we're clearing out our state variable. Um, the thing you have to remember is that these components are, are potentially being cached on the page. Um, and so we are, we want to make sure we clean up, um, on our way out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set our, we're going to call a set state to set the name to null. Um, when the user clicks the on close, uh, I, I'm sorry, when they click, click, eh, click the close modal and also when they click the cancel button. So just setting the field to null will basically clear out the field there. So that's kind of one optimization, um, that I'm adding to this code right now. So. There we go, we do our set name to null. Let's clean up some of these um, syntax errors. There you go. So now on open and closing of the modal, we will null out the field. Close modal. All right, and then let's uh, make another optimization right now. Let's just make sure that we're just passing in the object and not specific name so that my, my local variable, my user is not getting overwritten. So that's what we're doing right there by destructuring it. Well, let's create another state variable that we can use to keep track of the actual response um, instead of just rendering it on the page um, as a JSON object. We're going to create a, another state property called the model response and we're going to pull the name back from that and call set my user and use that. So now we see that's there. And we're running fine with that. Um, let's go. Uh, let's render. Well, let's enter some data. Everything's fine. Let's uh, give this another test because we're getting our value back to everyone. Okay. Now, this. Okay. Let's see what happens when we use our cancel. So let's set a cancel up. We got an error. Let's try and debug what's seeing going on. Um, it looks like when we hit cancel, um, data is null. So let's um, check that. And we're only going to set my user. Actually, we only want to reset the user value if it changes. If the user hits canceled, it should stay as whatever it was originally. So let's see what we got now. Right, so cancel is null and the value doesn't change. Okay. Um, we enter some data, show modal, and the value does change. So. Um, 
I think that uh, we have the behavior that we're looking for and it's all functioning properly. Um, let's see, what else do we want to try and do? Um, let's clean up the response that you're getting back from the server and uh, make it a little bit more legible. Let's use wrap a pre around it so that's another little you know, touch to see the data. Okay, what else can we do that might be beneficial here? Um, well, yeah, let's create an ion item and clean up this data and put the data inside the ion item. Is there value in that? Pretty straightforward. Let's pull the properties off, um, render them as the item, and we get the name, we change the name, and we get the value back. And we can still see what's going on underneath it. Um, what else can we do here? as we go on our little journey with modals. Um, make the edit, the edit's fine, so that's all working. Uh, let's actually, yeah, this is a good one. Let's actually add the appropriate types um, for all of our values. Our initial data is any. Just, that gives you the flexibility to do whatever you want to do with that object. Our is open is a boolean, and the on close is a function. Uh, we can be more specific with the uh, properties for the function, but for now, let's just keep it simple and uh, make it a function. Um, and as you can see, the value that you get there is it gives you the IntelliSense and you can see what all the properties are uh, for your components. I highly recommend that um, you leverage TypeScript and setting up your um, types that way. Now let's use this last little cool thing you get from um, um, Xcode. I just exported that whole component and refactored it, create my own separate file, which I highly recommend you do also. Um, these files get long really quickly, break out your components, put them in separate files. So now I have my separate file called my modal, I'm importing it, um, and uh, everything is still working as before. And now let's add a few comments in the end to wrap it up. Um, the my modal tracks the modal state, the my user tracks the state of my user, um, and my modal response uh, lets me know the data that came back from uh, my modal. And we can also, once again, go in here and structure the appropriate type, um, which is the response. So what we get back from the response is we get the cancel and we get the data response. Once again, we'll set that to any, just to keep it simple. So like I said, this is a basic pattern that I use in my modals. Um, source code will be available. Uh, hopefully you find this helpful. Um, I strongly recommend leveraging modals when you can in your application. You can use a similar pattern as this for alerts. Um, and uh, no, if you found this beneficial, please make sure you like and subscribe. Just do a minor refactoring here also. Um, I don't need to make my modal an object. It's just a simple true or false. Um, so that was the last refactor. Thanks, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Bye now.